Good afternoon. Let me just make sure that I am live. And it looks like I am. And of course my camera is crooked and apologies. I'm gonna try to straighten this up real quick. Let me see here. Ah, I managed to turn it the right direction. <laughs> what do you know? Whoops, too far. Hi Mary, thanks so much for joining. Oh, you know, trying to get the camera. Hey, Karen, thanks so much for joining. Trying to get the camera straight is like a losing battle. Well, you know what? It might have to be a little crooked. Oh, all right. I'm not touching it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it's still crooked. All right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Karen, thank you for joining. Um, so I have a, a kind of a special card here today. It is a Christmas card and it is made with some new products from the, um, yeah, I'm so glad that you got home early, Karen. That's wonderful. Um, and I'm, and I'm happy that you, you joined me here on my live. That's, that's even better. Um, but this card was made from some new products from the upcoming mini catalog, uh, the September to December mini catalog. And uh, those products are going to be available for customer orders beginning on September 6th. So super excited to share this with you. Um, but I have to tell you what, you're going to love the new mini catalog. If you haven't seen it yet, get your hands on a copy because you're going to need to put your list together because there are some fantastic uh, Christmas products as well as some other nice some other nice sets in the in the catalog. But this, I'm calling this a vertical joy fold. And um, I see my, um, I'm buffering bad today. Uh-oh. I, I look okay on my end, Mary. So hopefully, um, hopefully the issues will resolve. Although I see my screen blipping. At least I'm not fuzzy this time. I actually had a video a few weeks ago that I couldn't upload to YouTube. The quality was so bad. Uh, and it was a Facebook Live. So anywho. But this card opens up like this, and on the inside it says Christmas magic, and then drop this down, is in the air. Um, and I just thought this paper um, was so beautiful, and I don't know, yeah, it looks like the camera is catching the shine on the paper, um, but just gorgeous. Good on your end. Thank you, Karen, for, for confirming that. Um, yeah, we all have been having kind of like these, you know, We've been having these um, network issues, so don't know what's going on, but wish they'd get it all sorted out. I'm gonna set this aside, and I wanna just share the products real quick here with you. Uh, the paper I use for today's card, I use some of the Distress Gold specialty paper. This is in the annual catalog, and if you don't have any of this paper, you should get some. Uh, for your Christmas cards or your holiday cards because it is just beautiful. Fall cards, this paper is just gorgeous. And then I also use the Shining Brightly um, 12 by 12 Specialty Designer Series paper. That's a mouthful. Uh, and so there are six sheets in the pack. Um, there are three in vanilla. Um, and so we have kind of a, a leaf print here, a star print, and then kind of an o overall design. And then in the Night of Navy and gold, uh, and gold accents, by the way, we have the same, you know, overall design, the leaf print and the star print. And you can see I've already eaten into <laughs> two of my sheets. This is all I have left, um, you know, from what I, what I cut, so. Um, Trying on your phone. Okay, Mary. Fingers crossed. I also use the Shop the Town uh, stamp set. This is a standalone stamp set. However, hi, Faith. Thanks so much for joining. However, th the little shop or house in the Shop the Town, the new upcoming stamp set, the dies for the house pieces in the Let's Go Shopping die set will cut out these two pieces. So that's really fun. Uh, and thank you to Mary for letting me know that because I did not know that. It may say that somewhere in the catalog and I missed it. Um, I also use the horse and sleigh dies. 
uh, only for these little snow banks here, um, which will go on the front of my card. So that is that. Let me put this stuff aside, get it out of my way. All right. Gonna get a little bit of stamping done here first. And I'm gonna work on that, um, that label. Um, whoops, excuse me, sorry for the bang on the inside of the card. So my sentiment, and it is a single sentiment, um, says Christmas magic is in the air. So I am going to attempt <laughs> to ink up in Night of Navy ink only the words Christmas magic. Uh, I did this the first time around, we'll see how I do this time. I cut two sentiment labels and I'm gonna need to pull this ink close to me so I can see it. But basically, I'm gonna just touch this stamp set to the edge of my ink pad, kind of tilting it a little bit. And this is totally doable. You just have to take your time. Now I see that I just got some ink on one of the words I don't want ink on. So what I'm gonna do is just take my chamois and just very carefully wipe that ink off this is in script, so the letters, the, the, the words kind of do dip down into, um, into the next line of text. So let me see here. Just try to get that inked up ever so carefully. Let me see if I've got it. We'll give this a try and see if I was successful. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this off to the left side of my sentiment label uh, because I want to cut a banner on the right side. So let's see how I do here. So if you don't have the Let's Go Shopping dies of faith, yeah, if you, if you, but to be honest with you, though, and, and I did horrible, so I'm gonna to have to give that another try here. Let's turn that over and see if I can uh, ink this up. We'll give it one more try here. We, I got four tries, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to just ink this up on the very edge, kind of tilt it there for the end of that sentiment. Sorry, I need to focus here. All right, let me give this one more try. Give me, just bear with me here a second. And we'll see how I did the second go around. Fingers crossed. Ugh. All right, on to sentiment label number two. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this, put a sticky note over. Well, I would, Faith, accept that the sticky note would cover some of the script. Um, I could give it a try. Let me try it. If I can find my sticky notes here real quick. And I think I only have big sticky notes, but we'll, we'll see if I can, let me see if that'll work. It's just a tad tricky. Eh, actually, that may work really good, Faith. Thank you for the suggestion. So I'm only trying to ink up Christmas magic. And let me see here. Got a lot of ink on that sticky note. And I think I just transferred it to my sentiment label. Good grief. Let me wipe my hands off. <laughs> The challenges. All right, hold your breath. Oh, and did I mention this card may take more than 30 minutes? I'm gonna move as fast as I can. Let's see how we did here, I think. Oh, I'm gonna take it, yay. All right, whew. That did work, Faith, thank you. The script kind of, on the first line kind of dips down to the second line and I 
Didn't think I'd have enough room, but I did. So we are all good. And so that, I'm gonna give this sentiment label just a second to dry. That um, Night of Navy ink is notorious for just getting everywhere. At least for me it is. All right. And next, I am going to do a little bit of stamping here. I want you to notice that on the front of my card on my house, I made this a house, not a shop. I have a wreath on the front door. Uh, the image does not come that way. I actually stamped the small wreath um, from the uh, Shop the Town set onto the door. Uh, I'm also going to be stamping that on the inside of the card, um, but I just wanted to point that out. So let me go ahead. I'm going to get my Memento ink out. This is Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and I'm going to partially stamp uh, the Christmas tree image from the Shop the Town set onto uh, my envelope front soon as I can get situated here. And I just want a partial image. I don't want to take up the whole envelope with that image. Okay. Not to mention coloring in all of that. All right, here we go. Um, back to, I'm going to need this memento here in just a second, but back to the Night of Navy. And this is our inside panel. And I want to stamp the remainder of the sentiment is in the air. Uh, and uh, I will go ahead and try the sticky note thing again. It worked pretty good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I uh, thank you for saying that, Faith. So I just want to mention that uh, credit for this card goes out to Faith and Mary and Rosie. Um... We were on a Zoom call, and uh, they they gave me some input on the card when I was creating this the other day, and I greatly appreciate it uh, because I was uh, I was kind of in a conundrum. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the front of the card, and uh, they provided their input, and I think their input was spot on. Uh, and this really did turn out to be a nice card. Very pleased with it. All right, so we are stamping in the air tonight, is in the air, not in the air tonight. That's a song. That's a Phil Collins song. Too funny. All right, I'm going to stamp this on our inside panel, and that looks to be good. Hopefully no ink smudges, and I didn't stamp it correctly. Oh my goodness, I am just having a time here. All right, Try that one more time. Little tricky. Not something I do all the time. All right, let's try this one more time. Thank goodness for two sides on paper, huh? I just didn't get that stamp pushed down as far as I should have. Much better this time. Okay. I will take it. And then on the inside panel, I am, let me get that inky post-it note out of the way before I totally get ink everywhere. Give, give my hands a wipe on my uh, jeans. Back to the Memento ink. I am going to just stamp this small wreath just under the sentiment on the inside panel, like it's hanging from the sentiment. Um, I thought that was kind of cute. Okay, there we go. And that is it for the stamping. Yeah, but Mary and Faith and Rosie uh, gave me some good advice on the card. I was torn between putting the house on the front of the card or a Christmas tree and the house with the, you know, with the moon and the snow banks. It all works, so we are good. All right, I have gone ahead and pre-stamped um, the two sections of the house, the first floor and the second floor. And I've got a number of Stampin' Blends here. All of the measurements for this card, including the supplies I've used, the colors, 
and what I use the colors on are included on the PDF tutorial, which will be on my blog tomorrow. Um, but I did want to share with you how I colored the house because I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the camera, but um, I made the bricks on the front of the house um, variegated and uh, super easy to do, not hard at all. Uh, so I'm gonna try and get through that quickly. Um, the whole entire house, all of the bricks and the upper portion of the house, except for the windows, the door and the window box, were colored using a, copper, a light shade of copper clay stamp and blend. So that is everything. And then what I did was I took the dark shade of Cajun Craze stamp and blend, and I just went through and I randomly colored some of the bricks with this dark shade of Cajun Craze. You don't have to do every brick. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, your eye will see the pattern and then read the rest of the pattern that's not even there, if that makes sense. Um, but it's just a great way to just kind of, you know, to, to bump things up a little bit. Um, I'm trying to figure out where my, where my brick is down there. And again, not all of these bricks are connected in the image, you know, so just take your best guess. And we're just going to randomly do some here and there. We'll do one over here and maybe one right there. All right, and maybe that one down there. And then on the doorway, I am going to do every other brick around the doorway with the dark Cajun craze. So while I'm coloring, we had uh, we had a storm the other night. The, the, the Mid-Atlantic just got hammered in New York, Pennsylvania, Southeast Pennsylvania got hammered. We are not far from Southeast Pennsylvania. Um, communities uh, just west of us, you know, like maybe only 10, 20 minutes away from us. Um, major damage from that Monday night storm. It was really bad. Um, lots of trees down, lots of poles down. Yeah, so it just wasn't a great, great thing. All right, so I've gone ahead and darkened some of those bricks. I'm now going to take the color lifter and I'm gonna lighten a few of the bricks. And again, just random. And I'm just gonna kind of scrub this marker over some of the areas. I'm not concerned about lifting a lot of color. I just would like it to look light in the areas as if we had, you know, variegated bricks. This very much reminded me of like a brownstone home that you might find, you know, in New York or DC. Um, just thought it was kind of pretty to, to decorate the house this way. And that is probably enough. You may have to go over more than once with the color lifter. Um, let's do one more right there. And that that looks to be good. So I'll hold this up so that you can see it. Um, but you can definitely see now that we had three different color bricks on our house. The windows, uh, I've already pre-colored in the wreath and the greenery in the, um, on the front of the house here. I am using the dark shade of Lemon Lolly to put some light in our windows. So do that real quick here. I, you can see I made notes for myself so I wouldn't forget uh, things I wanted to point out to you. So we'll just get this scribbled on here as quickly as we can. Definitely gonna run over on this video, my apologies. All right. And I even gave the windows curtains and you're gonna see why in just a minute, especially if I'm rushing, you're gonna see why. But uh, 
get this window colored in. All right. Now I'm taking a fine line marker and my ruler, and I want I want window panes on my first story here, like I have on the um, like I have on the second story of the home. And so I am going to just draw myself with a fine tip marker, a couple of lines going up. Straight is helpful. If they're a little off, I don't think anybody's going to notice. And, uh, and I'll go across here horizontally. So my window now has panes. Very easy thing to do. I thought it more looked more like a house with the window panes. And I'm going back to my dark Cajun craze. All of the trim on my house is in Cajun craze. And so I'm going to go ahead and just, come on, kid. My husband just came home from work. If you're hearing something, uh, let me see here. Let me outline the windows. So if you go outside of the lines with the Cajun craze on the yellow portion of the window pane and you use a color lifter, not all of that Cajun craze will come up. I'll tell you that for a fact. Um, so what I did on, on my original card, I had a noops, right? What I did was I came in with a light shade of a pumpkin pie um, <clears throat> stamp and blend, and I drew curtains in. And so if, if you happen to make a little oopsies, like I did. There's always a way to fix. There's always a way to fix things. I guess that's my point. There's always a way to fix things, um, for sure. And I thought the curtains added a nice little touch. All right. I'm not going to finish coloring this. It, it's going to be, hey, Rosie, thanks so much for joining. Rosie, I gave you guys a shout out for helping me with this card the other day. Appreciate your help. Um, the window box and the door are both colored with the light shade of crumb cake. On the door, I did go ahead and just make some random streaks uh, just to kind of mimic some wood grain on the door totally not necessary. If you do that, you're going to need to come back and blend that color out. Uh, so it's not, you know, in your face kind of noticeable. Uh, but it did give some nice texture to the door. But those are the main things I wanted to point out. You can certainly color your project however you'd like. The trim on the top of the house, I used crumb cake Cajun Craze, and the Dark Shade of Copper Clay. Uh, just for your information, Mossy Meadow on the wreath. Um, so with the magic of video, here are my completed houses. And I am going to adhere these houses together. But before I do that, uh, these were die cut with the Let's Go Shopping dies that I already mentioned. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to cut the white edge off the top of the first story. And I'm just doing the top edge and I am cutting all the way to the black line on this little house. And just take your time doing that. Make sure you get a nice straight line. There we go. And then I can go ahead and... Uh, get this adhered together. So all I did was I just ran a thin bead of um, of glue, and I mean really thin, along the bottom edge of the second story, and then just kind of, whoops. It really it doesn't give you much room for adhering this together. However, it does work. 
just would like it to be straight, if at all possible. A little fiddly there. Okay, I think I've got it. I've got glue all over the place. But I am now going to grab some scotch tape. I need my silicone. I can't find my silicone mat. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to take some scotch tape on the back of this image just to kind of give it a little more stability there. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And then we can go ahead and start putting our card together. And I've got all the little pieces here. So we can start gluing this up. So the Distressed um, Gold Specialty Paper uh, is actually serving as our moon uh, behind our little house on the front of this card. And I cut this out with my two inch circle punch. So super easy to do. But let's go ahead and start building our card up and we'll get everything matted. So I have um, Knight of Navy cardstock and then uh, very vanilla mats for both the small card base and the larger card base on this card. I'll go ahead and get this glued up. And if you guys need to drop at 1.30, I totally understand. Um, I knew this card would take a bit longer than normal, but just because of everything going on on the card. So this is going to um, get adhered to our, the front of our small card base. As long as you didn't need to do the reno in a house like that, I agree, Rosie. Uh, they're really beautiful, but yeah, probably would require a lot of reno. But they, they really are beautiful homes. Somebody had style when they developed the brownstone, I think. I don't know who that was. And I'm just trying to get an even reveal all the way around on my card base. And that looks pretty good. We'll give that a press down and work on our larger panel. And our larger panel has the um, very vanilla and, um, and gold uh, leaf print on it, which is very pretty. Hey, Amy, no worries. You're not late. I have a complicated card here today, so taking a bit longer than the usual 30 minutes or so. Um, but this, I think, this would be the kind of card that you would save to send, you know, to a cherished family member, uh, you know, a special friend, I think, in my opinion. Um, because I will be honest with you, the coloring is a bit fussy. The images are small. However, totally worth it, in my opinion. You know, if, if you need a special card, um, I think this might, might fit the bill. And I am gonna put this large panel on the inside of our large card base. And in case you haven't noticed yet, the opening for this larger card base is on the left, not the right. So pay attention to direction when you are creating this card. And let me get this last mat uh, taken care of. Alrighty, whoops. Yeah, so I was talking about the storm damage um, in southeastern PA, Pico, which is the Philadelphia Electric Company, they had about 100,000 customers out. There are trees down, there are poles down, um, structures destroyed, homes damaged, it's bad. Um, I have an aunt that lives out in Landenburg, and uh, she's been running on generator power ever since um, Monday. She's still on generator powder power, um, so it 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 was quite bad. We got very lucky where we are um, that the storm wasn't you know wasn't any worse. It it could have been much worse for us, and thankfully it wasn't. Isn't the, the, the DSP gorgeous, Karen? I just love this. I'm going to, now that my ink is dry here, I'm going to quickly cut up the center of the right side of my sentiment label, and I'm just going to come from the corner 
and cut a little banner um, on my sentiment label end here. Not the not the straightest banner I've ever cut, but that's okay. Alrighty, and then get some Stampin' Dimensionals, and I'm going to adhere um, the small sentiment label on the inside panel. Um, so you'd open the front panel, and then this is going to be peeking. Um, the sentiment is going to be peeking out. And I'm going to just put it right about there. Make sure that's straightish. It looks pretty good. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put the joyful together now. So essentially, um, this card, um, you know, the, the flap of the small card will fit inside of the larger base and fold over like that. So let me go ahead, I'll get my little um, inside panel adhered down. Make sure I'm putting it on correct the correct way. All right. So I need to turn this over and apply glue to the back side of this small panel. And I am going to carefully open up my large base. Fold should be, the flap should be on your left. I'm going to go ahead and center this smaller panel on the inside of the larger card base, just like that. And I think it's pretty straight. That looks good. So that's how our card will open. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this card decorated. I do see I forgot to color that wreath on the inside panel. Just put a little liquid glue on my moon. So this is our moon for our house. And we're gonna adhere that down just like that. I have already pre-cut um, the snow banks and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere those together with just a little bit of glue. And I want the bottoms of these to be flush with each other. Let me see here. Scooch that down just a smidgen. All right, so I need this to be, um, where's my roller? I need that snowbank to be, I believe, three inches wide. It was just double checking and it is indeed three inches wide. So I think the best thing to do here is maybe, I believe that I actually cut this on my paper trimmer, but I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark it. Just make a small tip there. I know that's too small for you to see, but I can see it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just try to cut this straight up, hopefully. Alrighty. And this is going to get, um, so our house is going to sit just slightly to the right of the moon, just slightly. So let me go ahead and, um, oh, you know what? This was actually adhered. So I need to hold the house up. See, you remember how you put the card together as you go, as you go. So I need to kind of hold this house up where it's going to sit and adhere that little snow mountain to the front of the house. So I'm going to apply, uh-oh, something just went crashing. I just knocked all my uh, stamp sets over. So let me get that straightened up again. So you can see what I mean. This is a bit fussy. Uh, but again, so worth it. All right, let's try to get this adhered to the front of the house, and that looks like it's going to fit good. Whoops, it slid. Let me try that again. Make sure that it is, yeah, my house, my house moved. My snowbank moved. 
All right. Hopefully it won't move again on me. I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals and the house is going to get popped up with dimensionals. I am going to put some dimensionals over that kind of seam where uh, the house meets up. And I'm going to kind of overlap a dimensional here on the bottom for my snowbank and the house where that meets. And we can get this popped up. And we are almost done. So my apologies for running over. Sometimes you just have to. <laughs> and I have a little bit of glue on my finger, so stuff wants to stick to me. All right. And I'm just going to line up the bottom of the snowbank now with the bottom edge of the DSP on my card. And try to get that as straight as I can. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Let's finish up our house here. I am going to put a gold festive pearl. Uh, these are pretty small pearls. I'm going to put one on my little doorknob on our house. Just like that. There we go. And then I have here... Um, adhesive back star trinkets and this is a new item and I want to say that the suite that these belong to is Oh Holy Night if I have that correct I don't have the catalog in front of me but I'm going to take one of the large star gold trinkets and I'm going to put it up here in the sky on the right of our card try to get it straight there we go all right so that is the front of our card. You know what? Let me just quickly finish um, coloring in this little tiny wreath. And I found using the bullet tip on my Stampin' Blend worked best to color in this tiny image. And sometimes you just kind of need to just stop the color on because it's so small. And then this is the light shade. That was Poppy Parade. And this is the Mossy Meadow. I really like Poppy Parade for a Christmas red. Um, I think it's really vibrant um, and, and shows up well. So that's why I was using the Poppy Parade on a Christmas wreath. And I'm just kind of dotting that color in just because it is um, a small, lots of little things to go around. And I'm just going to color that over. It looked like there should have been maybe a, a little Christmas ball there, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it over. Because it's really so hard to tell. All right. So that is our little wreath. And we close our card up like that. And let me see here, what do I have left? I think my envelope dumped, excuse me. All of my stuff fell on the floor. All of my stuff went crashing to the floor. <laughs> All right. Um, I am, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to color in my Christmas tree. I will put my DSP on my envelope flap though, um, but I can go back to the original card to show you. Um, the Christmas tree. But anyway, um, you know, yes, I made a fussy card. However, I think totally worth it. Gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Um, and, you know, to totally worth the, the extra effort for a special Christmas card uh, to give to a special person in your life. Just go ahead and trim around here real quick. Uh, don't forget, there is a kit sale going on right now, um, up to 30% off on kits. It does not apply 
two paper pumpkin kits, only the kits in the kits collection. And the sales price is marked online. Um, and what else is going on? Don't forget to redeem your uh, bonus days coupons. If you earned any coupons in the month of March, don't forget to redeem those. Um, you know, in the month of August, you have the whole month of August, you would have received your coupon codes uh, via email. So if you don't see those coupon codes, you're sure you, you earn some codes, uh, check your spam folder and make sure that they're not in your spam folder. Um, you know, and if you don't see them in your spam folder, then definitely reach out to Stampin' Up at their customer service number. Um, but so basically this is my card for today. So uh, directions, measurements, supplies will all be listed uh, in a PDF link tutorial uh, on my blog tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Happy Ink and Thursday blog hop. So be sure to stop in, hop around to all the other blogs um, because I know you're gonna see some great stuff. Everybody's been doing sneak peeks. So you might get to see some more projects, right? With the new products coming up in the mini catalog. And again, that is available uh, for customer orders, the new mini catalog uh, beginning on September 6th. So thanks so much for joining. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, Y'all have a good day and I will see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Have a good one. Bye-bye.